welcome back to Learning Chemistry Online. Our topic for this week is going to be redox chemistry. Redox stands for reduction oxidation chemistry. When we think about oxidation, the process of something oxidizing, we probably think of iron turning to rust. And if you think about what this process looks like on the macro scale, you have a piece of iron which starts out as like a shiny solid, it's flexible, you can bend it, and then as it rusts, it becomes reddish in color and brittle. It flakes when you try to um, touch it or rub it. Um, the chemical reaction that takes place is that iron, whose symbol is Fe, you remember that, right? You haven't lost all of your names and symbols? Iron, which is a solid, reacts with oxygen in the air. Yeah. What's oxygen's elemental form? Good. We're going to pretend like you all said O2 and that it's a gas. Rust is actually iron 3 oxide. So that 3 in the middle name of the name tells us two things. It reminds us that iron is a transition metal, which hopefully we remembered anyway, and tells us that it has a plus 3 charge in this particular iron. So if the iron has a plus 3 charge in iron oxide, oxygen always has the same charge. What is that charge? Negative 2. If you don't have a periodic table in front of you while you're watching these lectures, it probably would help. Um, if you wanted to have a second tab open, webelements.com is one of my favorite online periodic tables, or you could just print a copy, or if you have yours from class, that'd be great too. Anyway, iron 3 oxide is going to have the formula Fe2O3, and you can use any of the methods that we use to find the formulas for ionic compounds to get that formula. The crisscross is probably the simplest. Iron oxide is a solid, rust is a solid. But before we do anything else, what should we probably do? Balance the reaction. It's been a minute since we balanced reactions. It's been a minute since we thought about chemistry. So when we look at this reaction and think about balancing, it is not balanced. First of all, it's a thing we should check. And it looks like the oxygens are gonna be the most complicated to balance. The iron is by itself over here, and when we change this number, we won't change anything else. So the oxygens are probably what we wanna to try to fix first. The oxygens come in twos on the left-hand side, they come in threes on the right-hand side. We can use the same least common multiple trick that we use in finding the formulas for ionic compounds to predict that we're going to need to have six oxygens on each side. So, if we need six oxygens on the left and they come in pairs, how many O2s will we need? Three O2s. And on the right-hand side, if we need to have six oxygens and they come in threes, we'll need two Fe2O3s. Now, the last thing we have to fix are the irons. How many iron atoms will we need to make this reaction balance? Good, four. Balancing reactions isn't actually the important thing that we're doing here, but it never hurts to remember. It's one of those skills that we got early on in this course and we need to not ever lose. So, when we look at this process, the iron starts out as an element by itself, and on the right hand, on the left hand side, on the right hand side, it's bound to oxygen. The iron is oxidized. doesn't really have to do with oxygen. It has to do with electrons. So let's just kind of, let's move over here for a second. The two processes have to happen together, oxidation and reduction. Oxidation and reduction involve a transfer of electrons. A substance that is oxidized... <laughs> for us to learn for redox chemistry. And there are two mnemonics that help us remember. One of them is oil rig. Where oil rig stands for oxidation is a loss, reduction is a gain. The other mnemonic that people like to use is Leo the lion 
says grr. Lose electrons oxidation, gain electrons reduction. It doesn't matter which mnemonic you use or if you don't use a mnemonic, but you need to know these two facts. Oxidation is a loss of electrons. Reduction is a gain of electrons. So <clears throat> let's go back to this reaction that we were looking at before. We, saw, we said in this reaction that iron was oxidized because it gained oxygen. But let's think about it, the, about it in terms of the electrons. What's the charge of the iron on the left-hand side? It's an element all by itself, so it doesn't actually have a charge. Keep in mind, any element can be neutral at any time. So iron's charge on the left is zero, and so is oxygen's charge on the left. When oxygen is all by itself in its elemental state, its charge is zero. Now how about in iron oxide? Well, we talked about the fact that this was iron three oxide, and that three tells us that iron's charge is plus three. Oxygen's charge, you said this before when we wrote the formula, is minus two. So the iron starts out with a charge of zero and ends up with a charge of plus three. The only way an element is going to change its charge is by adding and subtracting electrons. What's the other part of the element that has a charge? It's the protons. But we're never going to change the number of protons in an atom unless we're changing the identity of the atom. So the only way an atom's charge changes without a nuclear reaction is for electrons to be transferred. A neutral iron has the same number of protons and electrons. To have a positive charge, you have to have more protons than electrons. The only thing that can change is the number of electrons. So how did iron get this positive charge? It lost electrons. So we go over to the, the rules that we just learned. If the iron lost electrons, the iron was oxidized. Well, Oxidation and reduction are a pair. They have to go together. In order for one thing to lose electrons, you can't just take your electrons off and wander away from them. In order for one thing to lose electrons, something else has to gain them. What in this reaction gained electrons? Well, there's only one other element in the reaction, so that makes it pretty simple. The oxygen. The oxygen started out with what charge on the left-hand side? Started out with a zero, and on the right-hand side, it had a negative two. How does your charge go from neutral to negative? A neutral charge means your protons and electrons are equal. A negative charge means you have extra electrons. The only thing we can change are the electrons. And this oxygen had to gain electrons. If the oxygen gained electrons, it was reduced. Now there's one more question I want to answer about this. How many total electrons were transferred when this reaction took place? I said here that iron gained three or lost three electrons and oxygen gained two. Well, what happened to the other electron that iron lost? I'm confused. The key is in the balanced equation. So four iron atoms were oxidized. And how many oxygen atoms were reduced? Six oxygen atoms were reduced. So if we had four three electron oxidations, or we had six two electron reductions, what is four times three? Good. And six times two is also 12. 12 electrons were transferred. All right, so what we did with this process was we identified this as being a redox reaction. We looked at the charges of the reactants and products to figure out which electrons, which element, sorry, was oxidized and which was reduced, and figured the total number of electrons transferred. Let's try this again with another reaction. Let's make some salt, some table salt. Table salt is also known as sodium chloride, so we're going to start with sodium. In its elemental form, sodium is a solid. Chlorine's elemental form is, you're thinking through Brinkelhoff, I hope, or looking at your periodic table. Chlorine is a diatomic gas. And they combine to make sodium chloride. What is sodium's common charge? Good, plus one. And chlorine's common charge when it becomes chloride is negative one. So these are going to combine at a one-to-one -one NaCl, which is a solid. Now, is this reaction balanced? 
It is not. We have two chlorines on the left and only one on the right. This one's pretty easy to fix. We'll put a two in front of the sodium chloride, and then we'll put a two in front of the sodium, and now everything is balanced. To figure out whether or not this is a redox reaction, we want to think about what the charges are of everything on both sides. On the reactant side, we have elements by themselves. They have charges of zero, zero for the sodium and zero for the chlorine. And on the right-hand side, we use the charges to find the formula. Sodium is going to be a plus one and chlorine is going to be a minus one. So we're looking for things that change oxidation number, and we see two of them. The sodium starts out with what charge? Starts out as a zero. On the reactant side, it has a plus one charge on the product side. When it has a zero charge, it's because its electrons and protons are balanced. When it has a positive charge, it must have more protons than electrons. And since only the electrons can change, the sodium must have lost electrons. If the sodium lost electrons, it was oxidized. Chlorine, on the other hand, starts out as a zero and becomes a negative one. In order for it to have a negative charge, it must have gained electrons. electrons, And it was reduced. Now, sodium had a one electron oxidation and chlorine had a one electron reduction. Does that mean only one electron was transferred? It doesn't. And to see that, we got to look back up there at that balanced equation. We had two sodium atoms and one diatomic chlorine creating two sodium chlorides. So how many electrons were transferred? Two. Two electrons transferred. Okay. So far, so good? All right. But you know it's not going to say this simple. Because we're the fun bee if it's made this simple. Both of the reactions that I've shown you so far are synthesis reactions that create ionic compounds. But those are not the only kinds of redox reactions. In fact, let's think about a whole different class of reactions. Let's think about a combustion reaction. The combustion reaction we have done the most times, both in the lab and just writing it in class, is the combustion of methane. Methane's a gas, its formula is CH4. We add oxygen, which is also a gas. Combustion reaction always creates the same products. What are those products? Good. Carbon dioxide and water. We'll write that water as a gas because most of the time when this reaction takes place, it also creates a bunch of heat, which we'll talk about later. Um, and as a result, the water is in a vapor form instead of a liquid form. All right. Is our reaction balanced? It's not. So let's start with the carbon. We have one carbon on the left, one carbon on the right. It's balanced. Hydrogen. On the left, we have four hydrogens. On the right, we only have two. How do we balance it? We have two in front of the water. Now, how many total oxygens on the right-hand side? Be careful with those oxygens, because we're going to find them both in the carbon dioxide and in the water. One, two here, three, four there. We have four oxygens on the right. We need four on the left. So a 2 in front of our O2 is going to give us the wrong number of oxygens. Okay, but these things don't have charges. <clears throat> the compounds that we have in this chemical equation are not ionic compounds. They're covalent compounds. And we know that covalent compounds are created by sharing electrons and that the atoms in them don't have charges. We might say the carbon has oxygen with it on the right-hand side. We might make a guess that maybe carbon was oxidized if we go back to the oldest definition of oxidation, but we need a better way. We need a better way to figure out what's oxidized and reduced. And the better way that we're going to do that is with oxidation numbers. We want to be a little bit careful with oxidation numbers because we don't want to start believing that oxidation numbers are the same as charges. Oxidation numbers are a bookkeeping method. To keep track of electrons. in redox reactions. Okay. 
Oxidation numbers are a bookkeeping method to keep track of the electrons in a redox reaction. Generally speaking, they are not charges. Well, at least not necessarily charges. We will find that there are times when the charges, when the, when the charges and the oxidation numbers are the same. All right, so we need some rules for figuring out oxidation numbers. The oxidation number of an element by itself is always zero. So when we have an element by itself, whether it's the iron atom from our first reaction, or the oxygen molecule from our first reaction, the sodium atom, or the chlorine molecule from our first reaction, all of those were elements by themselves, all of them had a charge of zero, and they also have an oxidation number. Now, what about ions in an ionic compound? As long as they're monatomic, what does monatomic mean? Well, mono usually means one, and that's what it means here. When we have a monatomic ion, the oxidation number is its charge. So this is a case where the oxidation number and the charges might be the same. And that was the case for the iron oxide that we saw in the first reaction and the sodium chloride from the second reaction. But what we have here is not ionic compounds. What we have here are covalent compounds. So when we have covalent compounds and polyatomic ions, And we have to do a little thinking, and we have to do just a little math. Covalent compounds and polyatomic ions are going to have separate rules. Their oxidation numbers are going to have to add up to zero for a compound. And if we have a polyatomic ion, the oxidation numbers have to add up to the charge on the polyatomic ion. Okay, I guess that's sort of helpful because if we knew what the charge, the oxidation number for either carbon or oxygen was, we could figure out the other one because they have to add up to zero. But where do we start? Where we start is with some elements that are reliable. Reliable elements. usually have their common charge as their oxidation number. There's a decent relationship between reliability and electronegativity, but I'll be honest, I usually just sort of make a list and think about it in terms of the list. So hydrogen is one of our most reliable elements. Fluorine is an incredibly reliable element. Oxygen is also a very reliable element. Below those, we get to things that are slightly less reliable. The other halogens. What are the other halogens? I'm going to tell you what, that's going to be one of your quiz questions, what the other halogens are. Uh, the other halogens, the other elements in oxygen's column, sulfur, selenium, tellurium, um, nitrogen and its column, now keep in mind, when I'm saying reliable, that means that what they have for their oxidation number is their common charge. All right, so believe it or not, we actually know enough now to find the oxidation numbers of all of the elements in this reaction. If you don't have all of this written down, you want to pause the video for just a second and get it all down in your notes. Let's figure out some oxidation numbers. Methane, CH4, is a covalent compound. It's made up of carbon and of hydrogen. Which element is more reliable, hydrogen or carbon? Yeah, carbon didn't even make the list, so hydrogen is obviously more reliable. So then hydrogen's um, oxidation number will be its common charge. What is its common charge? Plus one. So the oxidation number of each of those hydrogens is plus one, 
and the total sum of all the oxidation numbers in this compound has to add to zero. So the oxidation number of carbon plus four times the oxidation number of hydrogen has to equal zero. Carbon plus four times a positive one is four equals zero. Carbon's oxidation number has to be negative four. If you follow the algebra, carbon plus four hydrogens has to equal zero. We know that the hydrogens are plus one, so carbon plus four equals zero. We subtract that four from both sides and carbon has to equal negative four. <clears throat> now what about the O2? Ah, the O2 is easy. Even though it's a reliable number, the reliable element, the more important thing is that this is an element by itself. So its oxidation number is going to be zero. Over here to carbon dioxide. Carbon is not terribly reliable, but oxygen is. So oxygen's oxidation number will be its common charge, which is negative two. And again, this is a covalent compound. The oxidation numbers have to add to zero. Carbon plus two times oxygen has to equal zero. I should find some way for my O's and my zeros to look different, but they just don't, so we're just gonna have to be okay with that. Carbon plus, in this case, negative four equals zero. Carbon minus four is zero. What must carbon's oxidation number be? Positive four. Now, let me say this one more time. This is not the charge on the carbon atom. This is still a covalently bound compound. It's still sharing electrons with the oxygen. Nothing in here has a charge. We're just trying to keep track of where the electrons are so we can tell if this is a redox reaction. All right, now we come to water, H2O. <clears throat> hydrogen is more reliable than oxygen. So hydrogen's oxidation number is the same as its common charge, which is plus one. Two times hydrogen plus oxygen has to equal zero. Each of the hydrogens is a plus one. So two plus oxygen equals zero. Yeah, this is really hard to see. But you guys are smart. I have no doubt that you can follow along. So we'll subtract two from both sides and oxygen's oxidation number is negative two, which works out because that's also its common charge. <clears throat> okay, now that we have oxidation numbers for everything in this reaction, we can figure out whether or not it's a redox reaction. If it's a redox reaction, electrons are transferred. If electrons are transferred, we're gonna see these oxidation numbers change. So do we see elements whose oxidation numbers are different on the different sides of the reaction? We do, and we see two, which we had better see. There are sometimes weird reactions that can happen where three things are involved, or it almost is like one thing, but for the ones I'm gonna give you for chemistry one, we're always gonna have one element that is oxidized and one element that is reduced. So the two elements here that change oxidation number are carbon and oxygen. Carbon's oxidation number starts out as a negative four and becomes a positive four. That's a pretty huge change in oxidation number. So it goes from having four more electrons than protons and then ends up having four fewer electrons than protons. Did it gain or lose electrons? Yeah, it lost a lot of electrons. Carbon lost electrons, which means that it was oxidized, which we kind of thought it might have been. Oxygen starts out as a to a negative two charge, the oxygen must have gained electrons, which means that the oxygen was reduced. Now, here's where, here's where we can't just look at oxygen, because if all you were doing was looking at oxygen, you might say to yourself, hey, hydrogen gained some oxygen there, maybe it was oxidized too. Nope, it turns out it wasn't. And by looking at the oxidation numbers, we can see that that's true. <coughs> All right, the class question I want to answer, and this will also be on your quiz, is how many electrons were transferred? How many electrons were transferred? 
Um, while we're at it, let me tell you what your mystery question for the day is. Your mystery question for the day is, what's a movie that you really like and that you think I ought to watch? I'm running out of things to see. All right, before I send you loose to take the viewing quiz and maybe go ahead and get started on your UT Quest assignment, which is due Thursday night at midnight, I want to do a couple more oxidation number problems. We're going to do some more of these equations on Wednesday in Wednesday's lecture, but first I want to find a few more oxidation numbers just to be sure we're all good at this. Let's take, um, let's take compounds with sulfur. That sounds fun. So let's try H2S and SCl2, SF4, and H2SO4. What I want you to do is pause the video and try to figure out what these oxidation numbers for sulfur are. If you don't do that, if you just sort of wait passively for me to show you, you're not going to learn as well, right? So this is the point where I'm going to make you work on your own paper, and I'm going to walk around the room, and I'm going to check your paper, and I'm going to ask you why you aren't trying it, and all of that good stuff. So pretend like I'm there in your house nagging you. Pause the video and find the oxidation number. All right, terrific. Um, so let's do this. Hydrogen, each of the hydrogen, the hydrogen is the more reliable than the sulfur, so it's going to have its common charge, which is plus one. If both of those hydrogens are a plus one and the whole compound has to be zero, then the sulfur is going to have to be a minus two. <clears throat> For the SCl2, chlorine is more reliable than sulfur. Chlorine will have its common charge, which is a minus one. Multiply that by two, we get negative two, so sulfur has to be positive two. SF4, the fluorine is the reliable one. Its common charge is negative one, so that's its oxidation number. Four negative one fluorines for a total of negative four. For the whole thing to be zero, our sulfur has to be positive four. Now, this one's more of a challenge, right? We actually have three elements in here. So we're gonna assume that both of the two reliable, more reliable elements have their common charge as their oxidation number. So we'll assume that the hydrogen is our plus ones and the oxygens are minus twos. So we have two times one plus whatever sulfur's oxidation number is plus four times negative two. All of that has to add up to what? Has to add up to zero. So we have two plus S minus eight equals zero. Two minus eight is minus six. So S minus six is zero. So sulfur here is a positive six. <clears throat> so we see that sulfur can have a lot of different oxidation numbers here. Sulfur can have a negative two, a positive two, a positive four, or a positive six. Let's actually do just one more of these because I'm realizing we haven't actually done a polyatomic ion yet. Let's do sulfite, not sulfate, but sulfite. Sulfite is SO3 with a negative 2 charge. Of the two elements, which is more reliable? Good, it's the oxygen. So its oxidation number will be its common charge, which is negative 2. So sulfur's oxidation number plus 3 times oxygen's oxidation number, which is minus 2, has to equal, careful, here's where things change. Rather than the sum of these oxidation numbers equaling to 0, the sum of these oxidation numbers has to equal negative two, the charge on the polyatomic ion. This makes the algebra just a teensy bit more complicated, but I know that you can do it. S minus six equals negative two. We'll add that six to both sides, and sulfur must equal a positive four. All right, that should be enough to get you started. It should be enough to get you started on the UT Quest. Um, we've got a, what I think is actually a pretty fun simulation that you'll do tomorrow. Um, I'll go ahead and post that later today in case you want to get ahead on it. Um, and take a look at your calendar, and you'll see where we're going for the week. All right. Hope you guys are having a great day. Hope you're happy to be back at school.